So this is the history of a, the atomic theory. So the atomic theory, the billiard ball model, the plum pudding model, foil, gold foil experiment, the planetary model, and the quantum cloud quantum model. So the history of the atomic theory, a theory is a structure and behavior of atoms has taken more than two millennia to resolve, 2,000 years. From the abstract musings of ancient Greek philosophers to the high-tech experiments of modern scientists. However, prior to the scientific revolution and the development of the scientific method starting in the 16th centuries, ideas about the atom were mainly speculative or just guesses. It wasn't until the very end of the 19th century that the technology became advanced enough to allow scientists to glimpse the atom's cons constituent parts, the parts, the electron, the nucleus, the proton, and the neutron. In this presentation, we will investigate the evolution of the atomic theory. We will look at the past 2,000 years of scientific development, the different models put forward, and how different experiments can have led to the current knowledge of the atom today. So Democritus, the Atomos, uh, the Atomos theory, John Dalton in 1803, uh, the billiard ball model. J.J. Thompson, the plum pudding model, 1904. Ernest Rutherford, the gold foil experiment in 1911. And Niels Bohr in 1913, the planetary model. And finally, uh, Schrodinger, uh, 1926, cloud quantum model, so quantum mechanics. In the 5th century BC, Lip Lysippus and Democritus argued that all matter was composed of small, finite particles that were called atomos. Atomos is the term derived from the Greek word for in indivisible. They, th uh, they thought that the atoms are moving particles that differed in shape and size, which would, could join together. Indivisible means not being able to break into smaller pieces. Democritus thought that the atoms of material determined the properties of the characteristics of the material. Ergo, iron was made of atoms that were very strong and hooked together, while air model air atoms were made of atoms that were light and whirly. This theory remained the agreed consensus for the next 2,000 years until more rigorous experiments could be used to explore the nature and characteristics of the atom. Here you see the, the hook that the um, democracist was talking about, little particles with hooks on them. The Greeks had come to the conclusion everything could only be cut so many times. They thought everything was made of particles of itself. For example, water molecules made of tiny particles of water. Iron was made of particles of iron. They, they named these particles atoms derived from the Greek word atomos, meaning uncuttable or indivisible. John Dalton was an English scientist who hypothesized that the law of conservation of mass and the law of definite proportions could be explained using ideas of atoms. John Dalton proposed that all matter is made of tiny indivisible particles called atoms, which he imagined as solid, massy, hard, impenetrable, moving particles. Dalton proposed that every at single atom of the element, such as gold, is the same as every other atom of that element. He also noted that the atoms of one element differ from the atoms of another element. Today, we still know this is mostly true. A sodium atom, for example, is different from the carbon atom. Elements 
may share some similar boiling points, melting points, and electronegativities, but no two elements have the same exact set of properties. Dalton, in 1807, billiard ball, ball model, pictured the atom as a, a tin, indivisible, uniform, dense, solid sphere. Dalton hypothesized atoms were identical for each element, but different for, from atoms of other elements. Essentially, Dalton thought atoms were featureless spheres of uniform density. J.J. Thompson was an English scientist who conducted experiments using a cathode ray tube. J.J. Thompson was famous for discovering all atoms contain tiny negative charged particles, electrons. With his cathode ray experiment, he theorized the electrons must exist as part of the atom since the mass of each particle is only um, a fraction or one two thousandths the mass of a hydrogen atom. Because of, the, of this discovery, he had concluded that the atom is positively charged cloud with negatively charged particles in the center of it, aka the plum pudding model, also known as the rum raisin model. Here you see his cathode ray tube. J.J. Thompson knew that atoms were, had an overall new, neutral charge. Therefore, he reasoned that there must be a source of positive charge within the atom to counterbalance the negative charge in the, of the electron. This led Thompson to propose that atoms could be described as negative particles floating within a soup of, of diffuse positive charge. Positively charged matter, electrons. This model was often called the plum pudding model of the atom due to the fact that its description is very similar to plum, plum pudding, a popular English dessert. Ernest Rutherford was a physicist from New Zealand who largely spent his scientific career in Canada and England. Ernest Rutherford and his colleagues Hans Geiger, later for the Geiger counter, and Ernst Marsden are famous for the, sol the gold foil experiment. They aimed a beam of alpha particles, the source in which was embedded in a lead block to absorb most of the radiation, as a very thin piece at a very thin piece of gold foil. They then examined the resulting scattering of the particles using a luminescent screen that glowed briefly where hit by a particle. The results of the gold foil experiment predicted the existence of small, positively charged nucleus in an atom. Fluorescent screen, a radium source releasing positively charged alpha particles. A beam of alpha particles was now directed at the gold foil, gold foil, and the vast majority of the alpha particles passed straight through the solid gold. A small number of alpha particles were slightly deflected off at an angle. A very small number of particles were significantly deflected and bounced nearly straight back. Based on Thompson's plum pudding model, Rutherford predicted that most of the alpha particles would pass straight through the gold foil. This is because the positive charge of the plum pudding model soup was thought to be too weak to significantly affect the path of the relatively massive and fast moving alpha particles. The results of the experiment, however, were striking. While almost all of the par alpha particles passed straight through the gold foil, a few alpha particles 
about 1 in 20,000, were deflected more 90 degrees from the path. Rutherford was astounded and was quoted as saying, it was almost as incredible as if I fired a 15 inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and, uh, to hit you. Rutherford's conclusions were that since most of the alpha particles passed straight through the gold foil, the atom was made mostly of empty space. The positive charge must be localized over a very tiny volume of the atom which also contains most of the atom's mass. Rutherford called this the nucleus. Niels Bohr was one of the foremost scientists of modern physics, best known for his substantial contributions to quantum theory and his Nobel Prize winning research on the structure of atoms. Bohr's greatest contribution to modern physics was the atomic model. The Bohr model shows the atom is a small, positively charged nucleus surrounded by orbiting electrons. This is the most common model of the atom that we see, usually see and draw ourselves for simplicity's sake, even though now it's not thought to be completely accurate. Bohr re theorized electrons travel in separate orbits around the nucleus and have that as, as the number of electrons in the outer orbit determines the properties of the element. Chemical element borium, BH, number 107 of the periodic table element is named after him. Niels Bohr, or, or Rutherford Bohr model, was presented in, and predicted by Niels Bohr and Ernest in 1913. Model, the model states the atom is a system cons consisting of a small dense nucleus surrounded by orbiting electrons similar to the structure of the solar system. Each shell of energy level can only hold a certain amount of electrons. Two electrons in the first shell closest to the nucleus and eight electrons in subsequent shells. Erwin Schrodinger was an Australian scientist who made one of the most significant contributions to modern chemistry. Schrodinger suggested that electrons weren't particles following a specific orbit, but rather behaved like waves. He came up with this idea that electrons couldn't be in any exact spot with the atom, but they could pinpoint their local location based on probability. This idea was expressed with the electron orbits and the electron cloud model. These orbitals could hold a certain amount of electrons and some had different amounts of orientation. Cloud quantum model. Cloud model was put forth forward by Schrodinger predicts electrons occupy regions of space, orbitals around a nucleus, depending on their energy level. 1s, 2s, the 2p and the, two, the 2p. The cloud model predicts atoms can have many orbitals which electrons occupy. The diagram right shows the first three orbitals. Do not confuse orbitals like the Bohr planetary model with electrons orbiting around the nucleus. The fundamental idea of the quantum cloud model is that it states you can never exactly know the precise location of an electron, only the probability of where it most likely be found. All right, so the Bohr planetary model. Got that one right. 
Tomos theory, Democritus, that one right. Gold foil experiment. Cloud quantum model. Plum pudding. All right, please read the questions and click. Okay, Democritus came up with the Atomos theory, which meant fundamental particles were uncuttable. The gold foil experiment fired alpha particles at a thin foil sheet. And J.J. Thompson was an English scientist famous for creating the plum pudding model of atoms.